Well, life has changed quite a bit for me. You know, I was here in Georgia just going about every day trying to make an impact um, in poor communities in Georgia, Um, trying to do that without attracting much, much attention to myself. And now I find that, you know, it's, uh, well, I'm definitely not at rural development anymore and working throughout the state with some of the poorest communities in the state. Um, you know, I'm home. <laughs> I'm right. home. Uh, I do get a chance to go out and speak, but uh, the work that I so enjoyed, I'm not doing it this time. Yeah. Well, uh, but how does that feel, though, the work that you so enjoyed you're not doing at this time? Uh, do you feel deprived of that opportunity because of the force of the right wing represented by Andrew Breitbart in this Dr. Tape or the weakness of uh, liberals in this country as betokened, as gestured by the president and the, and the administration uh, that caved in so easily on the other side? Yes, it just definitely is the result. Of, you know, it's, the, I, it's hard to to understand what is happening in this country, how those of us who think alike um, can uh, allow the few, and I don't think it's the majority of the people, to, um, to control us in this way, to, uh, to have those who are in power so afraid to, to challenge some of what is happening. Is this a result of the inability of uh, those people who join uh, the Obama administration or who are part of it to know the deep and profound history of the civil rights struggle, that uh, they may be out of the loop and out of touch, and as a result of that, may not be as aware of the necessity to engage in a sustained battle? Is that part of the reason? Well, certainly I think there are people who surrounding him who really do not fully understand the history. Um, I think if they had understood that history a little better, they certainly would have checked the source. They would have at least looked into the source um, of the information they were receiving on me without knowing that history uh, and being so afraid of of Glenn Beck and, and the right wing. They just acted so hastily. Yes. Reverend Sherrod, uh, when you first heard uh, what had happened to your wife, what was your reaction then, and what are your reflections as a longtime civil rights leader on uh, the situation now? Well, I was dumbfounded when I heard of her release. All kinds of thoughts came through my mind, but uh, I'm not one to react quickly. I saw this as just another big, big bump in the road. Uh, I knew that we would get over it in time, whatever this cause, or that it may be clarified in a short time. But then when I found out they asked for her to resign, and then uh, my eyes went back into my head a little bit. I just couldn't imagine why they would be asking for a resignation rather than resignation. Uh, let's get together, see what the problem is, and let's see if we can solve the problem together would be the attitude I thought that they would have. But, but looking at the well, whole you... thing, I looked at it as something, uh, one of the big bumps. You know, it was a small bump now. <laughs> <laughs> but right. one of the many things that have happened to us during our, the years that we've been together and fighting racism all over the country. Well, did you find it ironic, Reverend Sherrod, that since you are steeped in a nonviolent civil rights tradition and even a more aggressive embodiment of that with uh, SNCC, uh, Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, did you find it ironic that the same virtues that your group and other civil rights groups embodied of patient negotiation with people whose interest was to hurt and harm you? Let's be honest. Sometimes you were sitting down negotiating with people like Bull Connor or at least representatives of that particular view of life and those whose interest was to contain, control, and curtail black people 
and yet you were willing to sit down at the table of brotherhood, so to speak, or sisterhood and engage them that you, your wife was not extended the same consideration for which she had so valiantly fought throughout her life. That's true, but on the, on the other hand, we have always been surprised uh, by our own people as we fought the fight from time to time to see them uh, heen and horn where they should be, everybody supporting the, the struggle. We've seen a lot of uh, black leaders stand up right in front of us and condemn us, go against the people. We've, we, this is not new for us. I mean, it was hard. It was, it was, it was a terrible thing. To hear our own NAACP spokesperson saying something negative, uh, uh, but again, that wasn't something that was completely something that we never heard before. We never a situation that exists that we ne- that we didn't we have never confronted. We have confronted our own people. And do you hold the president accountable? I mean, I've heard this, I've heard that, I've heard he wasn't involved, I heard he was involved. At the end of the day, is Tom Vilsack acting without presidential uh, directive, or at least from the White House? Is Obama accountable here? You know, I know that Vilsack said he, um, you know, he took full responsibility. But I'm fairly certain. I know he he said it didn't come from the White House, but it came from the White House. Um, it came from the I was a political appointee, you know. I don't think Bill Sack could have acted without. Well, I know. Well, if you look at some of the the, the emails that that went back and forth between the department. And USDA, you know the White House was involved, and they didn't release all of them. There are still some internal memos that didn't get released to the press. They generated over 800 pages of emails just in those two or three little days, and many of them didn't get released. It was coming from the White House. Now, whether the president knew about it or whether people were acting uh, for him, I don't know. But that directive, they didn't make that decision on their own at the Department of Agriculture. Is there anything in this president's public portfolio that would suggest it didn't come from him? In other words, is there any evidence that he has been conscious of the critical role that race plays in shaping public policy in a way that might suggest um, that, you know, it wasn't coming from him? In other words, that he was a bit afraid that the right wing was portraying his White House uh, by association with you as somehow reversely racist, and as a result, he had to stamp it out. Is there any evidence that he doesn't think like that? I mean, do you have any confidence that Mr. Obama has a more complicated view of race? Uh, you know, that's a hard one to say. And when I had my conversation with him, he kept telling me he understands all of the issues and I should read his book, and if I do so, I would see that he does understand them. I still haven't read the book, but, um, you know, they, I'm not sure if he has a, you know, can fully grasp <laughs> how many of us um, and what many of us live with and, and, and how we have to survive on a daily basis. 